Hey, Cock 45 here. And if you're like me, you value your honor and you're always looking for a, a way to protect it, to defend it, like this. Yeah, maybe with a gun called the Honor Guard. I think it will do the job. Let's put another magazine in it and shoot us some more. <laughs> Yeehaw! And it's empty. Why? Because, well, two reasons. Ran out of ammo and because it's a single stack, nine millimeter, okay? So we're gonna take a look at the Honor Guard today. And uh, we bought this. Go ahead and do that because I'm so bad about, you know, remembering. <laughs> We've actually, I've actually done this. We're gonna shoot some hollow points. I got the box out here in a video or two and just never did do it. I, turns out I lied to you, right? I lied to you, a bare face lie, except I didn't know I was lying. Uh, in my case, it's just, as I keep telling you, low IQ. Well, let's see, let's go ahead and put them in both magazines. We just have two mags, two mags come with it. You got a seven rounder and an eight rounder, okay? Uh, this gun retails for around, I think 500 is supposed to, but now you may find it for less than that at uh, you know, wherever you purchase it, okay? But it's uh, MSRP is around five, four ninety nine dollars that area. And it's a firearm that people have been asking me about for a long time, wonder what I think about it. Uh, we've had it in for a while and uh, just haven't uh, been shooting it off and on but i've just not done a video till now we've been out of town doing things we're uh you know we're in the middle of july here as you can tell from the target date we just got back from the little movie adventures up north in michigan first thing we've done since we got back so it's nice to grab a gun and be shooting some more and uh i it, it says you're supposed to shoot it 150 200 times to break it in you know it's one of those you need to break it in uh i guess and uh, I say I guess because even though they say that, I've not had any trouble with it. No malfunctions or any bobbles of any kind, even with hollow points. You know, maybe it's saving them up for the video, but I have fired it about that many times, okay? And through that break-in period, which is about all I fired, 150, probably not 200, um, but, but close, there's not been any problems with it, all right? So that's good, you know, even if, if that is part of the instruction manual. You go ahead and shoot the firearm a bunch and you don't have any trouble. Eh, it's all right. Maybe they're covering themselves there a little bit, okay? Because occasionally, on rare occasions, maybe they have trouble. It's a veteran-owned, or I don't know if it's owned, but it's a veteran-operated company. I've heard that all along, that there are a lot of veterans that, that run the company, that are employed there, and that's always a good thing. I was taking some shots at the red plate over there before the video again, and I just couldn't hit the thing. And I, I told John before the video, I think I was shooting left, with a thin grip, it has a really thin grip, which is what you want. And it's what is so, or one of the attractions to a single stack nine. It's smaller, it's thinner, and it'll fit just about anybody's hand, you know. But with a thin grip in my large hand, I, boy, I tell you, I tend to want to pull them left sometimes. I'll go try it again since I'm blabbing about it. Let me try the, well, let me put one to gong first, okay? Get my confidence up. Let me miss it too, though. Okay, now I'll try the red plate. There we go. Well, I got him at least once there. Okay. Trigger's interesting. Uh, it's heavy, kind of. You might think it's a little heavy. It's about seven pounds or so. Uh, I like the weight of it, though. For a defensive pistol, that's fine. You know, it, it's fine. Some people, I think, would find it a little stiff. But, uh, you, you know, you don't need a two or three pound trigger on a defensive pistol, okay? Uh, if, if, if the weight of this is too much for you, maybe you need to practice more. Uh, but, you know, in a defensive situation, uh, you know, uh, motor skills go down the tubes and everything. And you just find motor skills, I was trying to say there. So, uh, it's fine with me. Trigger's fine in terms of the weight. Now, it is one of the negatives of the pistol, though because of the reset. The reset is, I, in fact, when I was shooting over there just now, I almost didn't get it back. It has kind of a long reset. And I'll let you take a look at it here. It's hard to tell. Uh, come back out. Well, well, it might help the cock it. Sorry about that, you know. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, now, here we are. I'll get it right in a second. I'm going to bring it back out. Click right there. So it has a long reset. Let's do that again. Bring her out. Click right there. Now, looking at it, I don't know how much that tells anybody. Sometimes I have shot a pistol that had a supposedly long reset, but it felt fine to me. I didn't really notice it being a longer reset than some of the, the best triggers. Uh, this one I noticed, it's long. So in my book, this would be a negative uh, on the pistol. Okay, there's only a couple of negatives really that I, that I have uh, with this firearm, and there are a lot of positives. But you know, that's what we do, we point out both. Uh, I'll tell you one of the positives is that grip. It may look funny to you, but it's not funny. Uh, that design is really nice. And, you know, you've heard me criticize a lot of pistols, and that's why I put wraps on them and everything else. It really uh, gives you some friction without digging into your hand. It, it is nice. Uh, you'd like that. If you'd like a pistol that will just kind of lock in, all right? And if you like a thin grip, you'd like that. It is single stack, all right? It holds, you know, seven, eight rounds depending on your magazine. And you can replace that back strap while I'm thinking about it. Let me show you. There's one extra back strap that comes with it. And uh, yeah, there it is. And you get a brass, piece of brass with a red uh, painted head. There you go, so you get two, two different back straps. I didn't switch them out. You knock out one roll pin and put that in if you're interested in that. They also include a, 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 a round that was loaded up to extreme pressure. You to test the barrel and the chamber. Now you can see what happened to this one when they did that. It uh, it expanded it, so it's even bigger than it was, you know, for a nine millimeter, and it warped it out. So I don't know if it messed up the gun or, or what, but it didn't work so well, did it? Ah, that was a joke. I couldn't resist. I'm sorry, folks. That was the one I made up when I saw that. Now what they do is they put they do paint the head. You'll get a case like that with the head painted red. And uh, just to show, they fired an extreme pressure round. I think it's beyond plus P and uh just to to make sure the firearm is, is okay all right so that was a joke it was a joke those folks who are a little extra gullible joke 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 alert okay so you get that and you get the back strap you don't get one of these sorry all right <laughs> if you want one i'll make one for you for eight hundred dollars all right so oh yeah we fired hollow points didn't we they worked okay so feeds those Notice the uh, serrations, they go all the way around there. So when you grab this thing, and now uh, that would be a pasta thing, you might not like the looks of it because it's different, but you really can grab that baby and work that slide. Uh, you get pretty good friction on them. I would like them actually a little sharper, to tell you the truth, but they're not too bad. And they're there just about anywhere you would grab it, just about anywhere, okay? And of course you could use the sight there too. You got a sharp edge there. So if you need to work the, uh, the slide on a belt, you know, not a problem. On your shoe, you can do that. You get it smooth on the back, you're know, coming out of a holster. or uh, Probably not a pocket, but you know, it's not gonna hang on things. So that's kind of nice. Very clear side picture. Three dots with a big orange front. You know, so very, pick, very easy to pick up. Uh, I have struggled a little bit at long range with it. Um, and in terms of just really picking off stuff I like to pick off with, which I can with some pistols, even small pistols at times. So I, for some reason, I've not been able to do as well. I think mostly it's pulling left. Uh, but in just general shooting and, you know, defensive shooting and reasonable ranges, even beyond reasonable ranges, you know, for a defensive pistol, reasonable is, you know, that target right there is even out of range probably. Okay. So for what I do, but I always figure if I can hit something pretty easily, uh, you know, the size of the stuff in here, you know, I'm in good shape. All right. So, uh, so, okay. I, I don't know if that's a negative of it or not. That's just me, probably my big hands. So it's got kind of a thin grip. All right. What else about, let's go ahead and take it apart here. Uh, I'm going to talk about the sights here. You got a big, healthy, uh, extractor there. You pull this back to disassemble and pull that down. Look familiar. You don't have to pull the trigger. Just release it and it comes off. So that's a plus for a lot of people. And it's going to look pretty familiar to you. You got uh, your your uh, spring. This is stainless, as I understand. Okay, it's one reason the pistol is a little heavier because there's a lot of stainless in it. The slide is stainless, what, 716. Uh, I think this is 716 stainless. The barrel is 710 stainless, so that means anything to you. And uh, it, it seems to be made well. It's got a kind of a heavy slide. And you also have a uh, chassis here. I'll take that out, see if I don't fumble it too much. I make a screwdriver for that reason just to get it started. You know, 
grip under it there. There we go. And you can pull that out. Now that is the gun, of course, just like with the SIG uh, P320. So you could put a different frame around that and, you know, there you go. You can, you can buy, I guess they offer these in different sizes. I know there's another, uh, they've got this one that's got a, I think a 3.2 uh, inch barrel. There's one that's like 3.8 or almost four, four inches. And there's one that has a longer frame here. I noticed that they call it the fist. And it's so you can push up against an adversary and it won't lock up the firearm. It extends beyond the slide. Okay. Uh, so, so, you know, if you have a purpose for that or if you think you might need that, they offer that too. But you can switch out the, any of that with this is the firearm, just like with the SIG P320. Okay. The chassis. So pretty interesting. That seems to be the way we're moving with a lot of these, doesn't it? And there are some countries, uh, sad as it is, Probably going to be some states like that around here before too long, coming to a theater near you, if we're not careful, uh, where we may have a similar situation. We don't fight it off, but where places where you can buy like one gun a year or you can only own one pistol or something, you know, and one in nine millimeter. If you're from one of those countries where that's the situation, you know, feel free to share as you cry in your beer. Uh, but that way you could have maybe three or four firearms like with the sig uh well you have one firearm actually technically and you could have different sizes one for well you're probably not carrying if you live in one of those countries right that would just pretty smart aren't they but at least you have different size firearms okay and then you work this back in there uh, hold your nose right and it'll get back in look at that even i can whoop yeah even i can do it that's pretty amazing all right so worked out pretty well and put this back. Let's see if there's anything else that I wanted to show you. Your firing pin. A little bit different uh, arrangement with that. Beefy uh, extractor there, that's for sure. Pretty strong looking ejector. So, seems to be made well. It's heavy duty. I mean, it really does seem to be made well. Uh, no doubt about it. I can see why so many of you are interested in it. And, uh, you know, kind of wanted to get our impressions of it. Over complimented by the fact that you even care what we think about things so we uh, wanted to do that um, let you know what to think about it and uh, put it back together it's rated for plus p even though it doesn't say it on the pistol but it's rated for plus p and if you hold this thing you believe it it, it should be rated for about anything okay uh, just seems well made all right now when you pick it up at first it feels odd it looks a little odd it, that's my impression of it oh man here's another pistol somebody trying to jump into the market here and and make some money they didn't look at what was out there and they think somebody's gonna want this crazy thing is it no the more you handle it the more you look at it the more solid it really seems it's grown on me since i've had it here uh, for a while oh man i don't even look forward to shooting that or you know doing a video with it but the more i handled it read about it and uh, shot it uh, aside from my inability to to keep from I think veering off to the left at long range, you know, my, my long range precision shooting or at least attempts at it, you know, I, I can't do it quite as well as I can with some other firearms of the size maybe. But uh, that's again, I think just me. It, uh, it, it really does seem like a nice pistol. It really does. Now, again, the negative is the, the reset. The other negative is the weight. All right. I weighed all these pistols. I brought these out for comparison and weight and everything. Uh, I've got a shield. I've got a Glock 43 and a Glock 19. So why are you bringing the 19? Well, it kind of relates to uh, the, let's start with the lightest firearm out here. The Glock 43 is about 18 uh, ounces or 18.5, but 18 ounces. All right. So you can see, and most people know Glock 43 now. So let's give it a look with that. There's a magazine in my pocket of all places. Okay. So there's kind of a look of those two. Uh, similar in, in profile, a little bit longer grip, okay? And uh, capacity, you know, similar in capacity. The uh, Glock 43, with, with this little bit, it doesn't take much extension at all on the Glock 43 magazine. You may already know that to get seven in it, which is why I have that. And so you got seven and seven with, with that length on both of them, okay? 
And, but there's a big difference in weight. Uh, like I say, 18 or 18 and a half ounces and with an empty magazine in it, even with this one with that extender on it. And then this thing weighs 23, over 23 ounces. Okay, a little over 23. So 23 ounces. Uh, it's, tw I forgot the exact numbers, but it, here's the thing. It weighs almost as much. It's right there with the Glock uh, 19 and weight. Okay, just in weight. Now in size, you know, there you go. Look at the size. Uh, not quite as long as the Glock 19 in grip. It's close. And definitely not as long in the slide. So it's a shorter pistol. Not a lot of difference in the in the magazine. Now if you got the uh, eight round magazine in here, it's going to be the same, I guess, probably. Yeah. So you got exactly the same length on the grip if it is, you know, eight rounds in it. Okay. Of course, you got 15 rounds in the Glock 19, but it's shorter. All right. Uh, so I mean, you know, just take all that for for what it's worth. I brought these out too. And let's see, the shield. You might be more interested in how it compares to the shield than these others. And uh, let's see, with the shield. Let me put the other mag back in the seven round mag. A lot of people are looking at these sorts of pistols, whether you are individually or not, a lot of people are. So I think a lot of people would say that this really is targeted at the shield. The shield is one of the most popular, uh, successful firearms out there in the you know, self-defense market, really. And hey, go after it. And that's kind of what it looks like they did. I mean, the dimensions are almost exact, except it's a little thicker okay a little thicker and heavier the shield was uh coming in at 20 ounces and 20 point something so this is about two and a half or three ounces heavier than the shield all right so it's heavier than shield, and you can tell when you pick it up all right so if weight is an issue uh it's it's funny but you know the ones you pick up that weigh that, that feel about the same the glock 19 and this because the reason they do they weigh almost the same all right almost the same so now that's empty. Now, granted, if you load up a 15 round magazine, it's going to be heavier than, you know, seven or eight you know, rounds of ammo, you know, in this particular gun. So I may have confused you there, but that's okay. I stay confused myself. So anyway, it weighs almost as much as the 19. It's not as big. Uh, it weighs a lot more than the 43. Okay. Another single stack nine. And uh, it's about the same size as the shield, but it, it weighs uh, a little more, a couple ounces more than that, two or three ounces more than that. Okay, so that kind of puts that in a thickness. I didn't do, but I will. Let's do the, uh, let's put it on the honor guard. Okay, and let's put it on the shield. We can tell here. Yeah, so you got more thickness on that honor guard. All right, that's where your weight comes in. That's your weight issue. And the, the shield is a little heavy, in, in my opinion, for a pocket pistol. Now, for a belt, you know, holster and everything, it's, you know, it's fine, of course. Uh, the 43, I've got, I haven't moved the caliper. You got the same thing, you know, it's your slide is a lot thinner on the 43, which is why it's the, it's the least heavy, otherwise known as the lightest of, of those three, okay? And then the Glock 19, before I change it, uh, It'll almost fit down the side, slide of that Glock 19. So, but the Glock 19 is a little bit thicker, just a little bit. So, so anyway, that's why it's heavy. And it's got more steel in it, got a lot of stainless steel in it. It has some parts that might be polymer and other pistols like that uh, guide rod and different things that, and that chassis and all that maybe. It's, uh, it's, it's made well though, so you get the weight. Now weight is not necessarily a negative. A lot of us will claim it's a, a negative most of the time, I guess. Uh, but the benefit of weight, of course, is what? You all know. Less recoil. Easier to shoot sometimes. Easier for follow-up shots. Staying on target and all that kind of thing. You know? so, so weight is not always a negative. But when you're talking about a carry pistol, especially a, a slim single stack carry pistol I think weight becomes more more of an issue you know whether your your XDM uh, weighs a little bit more than your Glock 17 or your HK 330 or whatever uh, you know name your pistol it's it's a big old kind of a duty pistol or getting getting into that category and one's a an ounce heavier or two ounces not quite as big a deal you're probably gonna if you're gonna carry any of those it's gonna be on your belt probably a shoulder holster in a good holster and hopefully a good belt 
all right, so it's not as big an issue. These kinds of pistols, we tend to, you know, want to tuck them into smaller places, smaller holsters, you know, even pocket holsters maybe, uh, at least the 43. I carried the 43 in a pocket holster a lot, okay? Now, I've never carried the shield in a pocket holster much, but I know people who do. This one, I'm going to say because of the weight, uh, that's going to be a belt holster. That's going to be in a regular holster, I think, on your waist, on your belt, or something, okay? So, maybe that confused you even more, but just wanted to give you an idea where it fits size-wise, weight-wise, and all that, okay? This is a Glock 19 holster, for, by the way, and it fits in it pretty well. All right, take a couple more shots. Let's put one in the magazine there. All right, let's put it back in the holster. The real question is, would it uh, get you out of a scrape, and will it work? I think the answer is it would. Okay, it's, it's a good little shooter and uh, seems to be made well. Let's try something else, like a couple of cowboys. Oh, oh we've got a two liter it's not been addressed. All right, I knew I'd pull left on him. <laughs> and we're empty. That's what you get with a single stack. Uh, I know most of you don't know that or realize it, but with a single stack firearm, you get fewer rounds. You also get lower capacity. Okay, how's that for a crazy way to explain it? So I'll show you one more time. Uh, it's a trade-off, you know, it, it really is. And some of the things I talk about and mention, there are people who think I'm crazy and this amount of weight or two ounces doesn't matter and all that kind of thing. And it maybe doesn't with you. But when I get into smaller carry pistols, I'm a little more uh, critical, a little more discerning. Little things make a bigger difference sometimes, okay, in terms of picking one and choosing it. But the beauty is these days, uh, there's so many well-stocked gun shops. You can, uh, so many gun shows, you can go by and just pick them up. You know, I mean, if you go to a gun shop, gun show, where a lot of these guns displayed, you can just walk by and pick up one of these. How's that feel? You know, and then grab the Glock 43 and grab the shield. How's that feel? Put one in both hands, you know, you know, and, you know, and sight them, uh, you know. So, and, and then uh, so many ranges. You know, we'll let you rent all these firearms. So uh, try to get to one of those and see what you think, all right? And obviously, I think most of us just really like the idea that uh, this company, Honor Defense, you know, uh, is operated by, by, by veterans, you know, and made in the USA. You know, it's a good reason to give it serious consideration. If the weight doesn't bother you and the trigger uh, reset is not a big deal for you, uh, you know, it's a viable option. You know, it is. All right. I think I should shoot that little poplar. I was going to try to let that little poplar tree grow, see how long it'll last around here. They come up all over the place, of course. Let's go back to the gong. I don't think he's been uh, addressed enough. Okay. I don't know where I'm going, John. Oh, am I missing that like that? All right, let me slow down. All right. I think I might have been having an elevation problem there, too. I'm going home, John. <laughs> I'm going home. I don't know what it is. I'm not looking at the sights right or something. Uh, I mean, uh, around, uh, uh, it's crazy, isn't it? Uh, around here, you know, hitting the two liters and, and stuff. Yeah, I don't have any problem. I don't know what it is. I, I don't know what it is over there. I'm doing something. Uh, but that's that's what you get. We don't, you know, we don't edit out the misses and put in hits and all that kind of stuff. And I never try anything to make anything look worse than it is or better than it is. Uh, let me load one more magazine. Okay, that really 
bugs me. I don't know what is going on with me. Uh, that is crazy. Have you ever done that though? Have you ever gone to the range uh, and with a handgun you know you can shoot? That is one you've shot a long time. And, and uh, for some reason you can't seem to hit anything. I mean that's not exactly what this situation is. Uh, it's just that uh, man, gong is pretty big and I have hit it, so I don't know what's going on. All right. Usually if I just slow down, pay attention to where I'm holding my sights, I don't have that problem. It's really hot and humid. Maybe that's it. <laughs> that gong is moving on me. Okay. <sighs> All right. I'm going to... I don't know. I'm gonna hold. I want to see it in the straw. What I'm gonna see if I miss. I'm gonna hold down lower. All right. Hit the gong. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's come back here to reasonable distances. Make sure it's, you know. I mean, the, the thing just feels fine until I get out there. It's not accuracy, it's not that, it's me. It's me. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a fine little defensive pistol. It's just uh, something going on with me out there. Uh, again, the flat grip, the narrow grip, and then maybe, uh, I don't know, something else on top of that. I'm just uh, clenching or something when I get out there with it. So uh, my assessment is it's a, it's a nice pistol. I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, uh, again, other than the weight for the capacity, I think that's the, the thing I guess I, I think about. I, if, you're, if you're coming down that chain of pistols, all right, you got a big old duty, say a, some of the largest duty pistols, you got a lot of capacity, you've got a big gun. Then you move down to maybe a compact model or even a little bit smaller duty gun. You got a little bit less weight, a little smaller, but uh, and, and a little less capacity. And you get down to compacts maybe, and you may still have pretty good capacity, but you got a more compact, imagine that pistol, that's a little more concealable, like Glock 19, something like that. And you move on down, to like a 26, you get less weight, you know, less capacity, but still nice, you, you move on. So, and then you move down into the single stacks and you should have less weight, even though, because you're down to six, seven rounds. So you expect to have less weight, less thickness, less length and all that. So that's the only thing I would say about it. it the proportionate uh, uh, decrease in uh, capacity and weight uh, seems a little bit out of kelter in terms of the all the other pistols in the great scheme of things but if the weight doesn't bother you and the trigger reset doesn't bother you, it's a nice pistol that grip is worth a million bucks you know you really you can lock in on that thing for sure when you pull that thing out it's it's not going to slip on you and uh, you wouldn't have to put any kind of grips on that at all that i can imagine so anyway the honor guard from honor defense that's kind of my take on it and uh you know i, I struggle at long range but uh it, it shoots fine at reasonable distances and uh it's something i feel comfortable carrying you know and i just have a sniper rifle on my back for the 80 yard shots life is good Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I'm sure if you didn't, we'll be hearing from you. But while you're here, I want to make sure you guys are aware of SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can get certified in gunsmithing with hands-on experience and also an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they are very accepting of GI Bill too. They work a lot with veterans. So go over to uh, sdi.edu and check them out. See if that's something that you're interested in. And also, while you're going out on the interwebs and looking at things like that, don't forget the Hickok 45 Facebook if you're a Facebook kind of guy. Um, 
check that out hickok 45 facebook also uh the real hickok 45 on instagram and hickok 45 on twitter don't forget to check that out and also we have a website now hickok45.com try to keep it simple for you guys and especially those of you in kentucky www.hickok45.com you can go over there and find out about all kinds of different things that we're doing uh, we've got links to uh, the people that, that support our channel we've got uh, links to our store we have uh, merchandise t-shirts and hats and different things over there if you want to check that out so go to hickok45.com most of everything is over there also if you want to see some other content that you can't find on this specific channel you can go to the hickok45 and son youtube channel where that's you know mostly me doing stuff over there and dad makes uh, an occasional uh, appearance over there and also i have a facebook john hickok on facebook you can also find the link to that in the description of the hickok 45 and son videos and speaking of that don't forget to check out the description of the hickok 45 videos for any information about meet and greets and all that kind of stuff also don't forget to check us out on full 30 and if you've done all of that all of those things if you've completed all of that, then the only thing left to do is to watch a bunch more Hickok 45 videos. So I'll leave you to it and I'm going to finish painting these targets.